everybody. Welcome to Worthington Library's online story time. My name is Miss Karen and today we are going to do some stories about ponds and pond animals. But first let's do our opening song. This is The More We Get Together and the signs in this song go like this. This is more and when we do together we're going to put our hands together and circle everybody in and this is happy. Okay. When we get to the part about friends, we take our pointer fingers and we hug each other. All right. And I think that's all you need to know. You ready? Here we go. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. For your friends are my friends and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Good job, let's get started. Before we do our first story, I wanna teach you another sign. This is the sign for duck. We're gonna hold our hands right here and make it look like a duck's bill and just say, like we're quacking, quack, quack. The first story I have for you is called Splish Splash. Ducky. And every time the ducky says quack in the story, we're going to do the sign for duck. Okay? This is by Lucy Cousins and it is published by Candlewick Press. Hello, I am Ducky Duckling. When I'm feeling happy, I say quack, quack, quack. Oh, goody, hooray! It's raining today. I'm going to find my friends to play. Ready? Quack, quack, quack. Drip, drip, drop. I hop with frog. Looking pretty happy. You ready? Quack, quack, quack. I like to squirm with wriggly worm. Quack, quack, quack. A hug for bug and a hug for slug. Quack, quack, quack. Into the pond to play with the swans. Quack, quack, quack. Splash, splish, I swim with fish. Quack, quack, quack. We shake our feathers in the rainy weather. Quack, quack, quack. Drip, drop, plip, plop. Rain is funny on your tummy. Quack, quack, quack. Squeak, squeak. Hide and seek. Ooh, who's making that squeaking sound? Can you find them? Yep, there's Mouse. Quack, quack, quack. Duck is happy. Oh, no. The rain has stopped. No more drips. No more drops. No more quacking. I'm feeling sad. I think I'll go to see my dad. Cheer up, ducky. Here comes the sun. Look at the butterflies having fun. We'll quack together whatever the weather. Hop on my back and quack, quack, quack. Now we're going to sing a song about a duck and a couple of other pond animals, and I'm going to show you the signs for those as well. But remember the sign for duck was this, right? So the song goes like this. Are you swimming? Are you swimming? In the pond, in the pond. Yes, I am, says duck. Yes, I am, says duck. All day long, all day long. What is this? You see his back legs? Good for hopping. Yeah, there's the frog. And the sign for frog goes like this. We're going to take these two fingers, put them right under our chin, 
and just wiggle them. And that's because it makes me think of the frog's chin getting bigger when he croaks. All right, so let's sing our song about the frog. You ready? Are you swimming? Are you swimming in the pond? In the pond. Ready? Fingers right here. Yes, I am, says frog. Yes, I am, says frog. All day long. All day long. Good job. Now, who is this? Yeah, this is a fish. And a fish, you hold your hand with your thumb up and you swim it. Okay, that's the sign for fish. Are you swimming? Are you swimming? In the pond, in the pond. Yes, I am, says fish. Yes, I am, says fish. All day long, all day long. One more for you, okay? Who is this? Yeah, this is turtle. And the sign for turtle goes like this. Okay, we're gonna make a little fist with our thumbs sticking over the edge. We're going to put the shell on top. Okay? There's turtle. All right? Are you swimming? Are you swimming in the pond? In the pond. Ready? Get your turtle ready. Put its shell on. Yes, I am, says turtle. Yes, I am, says turtle. All day long. All day long. Good job. The next story I have for you is an older story, and this is based on a book that I believe is out of print now, but the title is A Turtle Tale by Frank Ash, and it was originally published by Dial Press. And before we get started, I wanna remind you of something about turtles. The coolest thing about turtles is that they can pull themselves inside their shell. So if they're scared or hiding, or just taking a nap and want to keep safe, they will pull themselves inside their shells. This is a story about a turtle who has a little trouble figuring out when to put his head out and when to keep it back in. But he's trying to learn how to be a wise turtle. Now, wise is another word for smart, and it? So it means that you are smart and you make good decisions if you are wise. So here we go. A Turtle Tale by Frank Ash. One morning, on the way to the pond, an apple fell on Turtle's head. Bonk! Ooh! It hurt so much that Turtle pulled his head inside his shell and made up his mind to keep it there, thinking that's what a wise Turtle would do. Inside his shell, it was so dark he couldn't see a thing, but he could still smell his way along the path to the pond. On the way, he bumped into an old friend. Hey, watch where you're going. Sorry. Well, he bumped into rocks. Ow! And he fell off logs. And he rolled down hills. And when he got to the pond, he could neither eat nor drink. Why couldn't he eat or drink? Yep, because he wasn't going to put his head out of his shell, was he? He could neither eat nor drink, and that night, Turtle cried himself to sleep. When he woke the next morning, he stuck his head out. And he made up his mind to keep it there, thinking, that's what a wise turtle would do. By then, he was very hungry and very thirsty. So he took a nice long drink, and he had a fish for breakfast. Yum. Then, he climbed on top of his favorite rock, and he began to sun himself. Oh, that felt good. When the sun went in and raindrops began to fall, all the other animals took cover, but not Turtle. Fox, too, was running for cover when he saw Turtle sunning himself in the rain, and he decided to have some lunch. While Fox leaped through the air straight for Turtle's head, Turtle thought to himself, but then again, maybe it's best if I keep my head out sometimes and sometimes put it in. Thunk. Oh, ow. <sighs> Well, Fox finally gave up and went on his way. And Turtle 
stuck his head out when the rain stopped and the sun came out again and he finished sunning himself thinking, yup, that's what a wise turtle would do. The next story I have for you is by Kimberly Knudsen and it is called The Jumping Game. And in this game and the story, there is a fish and there is a frog. Now I want to show you something about the frog. What do you know about frogs and jumping? Frogs are really good jumpers, aren't they? Look at those legs. See how they're bent? When a frog jumps, he straightens out his legs and he uses that bend to help him get extra push when he jumps up. Now, grown-ups, kids start jumping around the age of three, give or take. Sometimes it takes them a little bit to get used to the motion and one thing that you can help them do to figure out how to learn to jump is to remind them to bend their legs. So when we do this story, we are going to jump along with fish and frog and when we jump like the frog, we're gonna bend our legs way down low. You're not gonna be able to see my legs, sorry. Here we go, we're gonna bend them way down low and then we're gonna push our feet really hard against the ground. Ready? One, two, three, jump! All right, so bend your legs way down. Push your feet really hard and jump. Good. Here we go. This is the jumping game. Fish jumps. Frog jumps. Ready? Bend your legs. Jump. Fish jumps again. Jump. Frog jumps again. Ready? Jump. Fish and frog jump at the same time. Uh oh, bonk. Oh, ow. Fish and frog decide to play hide and seek instead. Here is another super short story by Michelle Knudsen, um, also by Candlewick Press. And this is another story about fish. Do you remember the sign for fish? Yeah, so we're going to take our fish and do the story along with me. And because it's really short, we're going to do it twice. Okay, here we go. Fish swims down. Ready? Take your fish down. Fish swims up. How high can you make your fish swim? Way up there. Good job. Fish swims upside down. Whoop. Put your thumb down this time. Fish swims in circles. Make your fish swim in a big circle. Fish swims in more circles, more circles. Oh, fish is dizzy. All right, let's do it again. Here we go. Get your fish ready. All right. Fish swims down. Fish swims up. Way up. Fish swims upside down. Fish swims in circles. Fish swims in more circles. Oh, fish is dizzy. Oh. Now let's do a rhyme about a frog. Are you ready? This is called a little frog. And if you are big enough to jump like a frog by yourself, you can jump. Grown-ups, if you have a tiny child, um, you can lift them up when they jump, okay? Um, and you can do that even with, with young babies. You can lean up or down to help them get the feeling of jumping, okay? Let's go. A little frog in a pond am I. Hippity, hippity, hop. And I can jump in the air so high. Hippity, hippity, hop. Let's do it again. You ready? A little frog in a pond am I, hippity hippity hop, and I can jump in the air so high, hippity hippity hop. Good job. The last story I have for you today is about a frog, a special kind of frog. This is a wide-mouthed frog. And it is by Keith Faulkner, and it is published by Dial Books for Young Readers. There's a part in this story for you, illustrated by Jonathan Lambert. And I want you to open your mouth 
as big and wide as you can, like a wide mouth frog. Ready? Show me how big and wide you can make your mouth. Good job. Now say, I'm a wide mouthed frog and I eat flies. Can you say that with me? Let's do it. I'm a wide mouthed frog and I eat flies. All right. Are you ready? Here we go. I'm a wide mouthed frog and I eat flies, said the wide mouthed frog, shooting out his long sticky tongue. As he hopped along, he met a blue feathered bird. I'm a wide mouthed frog and I eat flies, said the wide mouthed frog. What do you eat, bird? I eat wriggly worms and slugs, replied the bird, snapping his pointy beak. Next, the wide mouthed frog met a furry brown mouse, and he said, I'm a wide mouthed frog and I eat flies, said the wide mouthed frog. What do you eat, mouse? I eat crunchy seeds and juicy berries, replied the mouse, wriggling her whiskers. The wide mouthed frog was still catching flies when he saw a big green alligator. I'm a wide mouthed frog and I eat flies, said the wide mouthed frog. What do you eat, alligator? I eat delicious wide-mouthed frogs, said the alligator, showing his sharp white teeth. The wide-mouthed frog stopped catching flies and gulped. <clears throat> then he puckered his lips and he made his mouth as small as possible. Ooh, you don't see many of those around. Do you? He said. And he leaped into the pond with a splash. And that was our last story. It's time now to say goodbye. You ready? Let's reach way up high there. We're going to tickle our clouds. Here we go. Tickle the clouds. Tickle your toes. Now turn around and tickle your nose. Reach down low. Reach up high. Story time's over. Wave goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Can't wait to see you again in person. Take care.